Okay, so good day guys. So we are now in our part 3 na ni, no? Part 3 na sa static uh, lateral force procedure. So hapit na dito mabot dito sa katong pag-compute na sa base shear. So hopefully, uh, na-remember ka pa rin ito mga parameters na ito ang uh, kailangan gamitin, no? In order for us to solve the uh, base shear later. Okay, so proceed na tayo guys sa uh, building period or T no, which is kailangan po niya uh, later. Okay, so the UBC 97 gives methods, two methods no, for determining the building period T. The first is an approximate method that implies that the natural period increases as the height of the structure increases. Okay, so uh, that is given by these equations guys which is uh, ginagamit na siya for almost all the buildings na so muna itong formula guys for uh, building uh, period T so this is the this equation is known as the method A no? so duha man to ka methods di ba ang going on so we have method A and method B so muna yung method A guys so as you can see no? ang going on niya muda ko ang T pag nagasaka po lang height HN. Okay, so HN guys is the actual height of the building above the base to the end level. No, hanto dito sa pinakataas. Okay, so definitely, sa kagin na siya kay, kay ang T is directly proportional to HN. And last time guys, uh, na discuss mo natin about sa HN, di ba? Katong maximum height na pwede, no? na pwede uh, for example, sa steel moment resisting frame or or reinforced concrete uh, moment resisting frame, di ba na ato sa table, no? na ato yung HN or maximum height allowed for you to uh, construct a specific structure. Okay, so napot tayo ginito na CT guys, which is the building period coefficient and that will be discussed on the next slide. Okay, modern to formula guys sa T is equal to CT times HN raised to 3 fourths. Okay, so this is the values for CT guys. Then, uh, ato siyang gilahi ang katong US customary and katong naka SI. Uh, definitely, kanika dito yung focus ng SI kay We are dealing with SI manggit na units. Okay, so for steel moment resisting frame, then you will be using 0 0.0853. Then for uh, reinforced concrete moment resisting frame and eccentrically braced frame, so we'll, we will be using 0 0.0731. Then for all other buildings, so 0 0.0488. Okay, so definitely, uh, there is a Pilipinas, so we like magita moment resisting frames. So, either of the two na na, depende kung naka-steel or naka-RC ka. Okay? So, for English unit guys or US customary, so for steel, uh, moment resisting frame 0 0.035, 0 0.030 for RC and for all other buildings 0 0.02. Okay? But the UBC 97 contains an alternative method to be used in finding CT for structures with concrete or masonry shear wall so kung dili ka gusto ng mga values so pwede nimo i-solve using these formulas guys na no, presented here so kanang una naka SI ay naka US customary then ang ikaduha naka SI na siya okay so where in AC is the combined uh, effective area of the shear walls in the first story of the structure in square uh, feet or square meters so the value of AC can be obtained from this equation here. Okay, simply submission of AE uh, times 0 0.2 plus DE over HN squared. So AC is the horizontal cross-sectional area of a shear wall in the first story. And uh, DE is the length of the shear wall in the first story in the direction parallel to the applied forces. Okay. Take note that the value of this uh, this term here should be equal to or less than 0 0.9. Okay, so any value greater than 0 0.9 is invalid. Okay, so 0 0.9 is the maximum. Okay, 
Okay, so another method for finding the uh, T is uh, known as the method B. Okay, so method A na ito ganina. So, natin yung method B. So, this is based on the formation characteristics of the resisting elements and it is more a uh, rational determination. Okay, so, pasabot, aning deformation characteristics? So, uh, dependent siya sa kon guys, dependent siya sa later lateral displacement sa structure. Uh, say, for example, so, you have this frame. Okay, so, you have this frame here. Then, kung nakai force dara, then, normally, di ba, ma mag-deform na siya, fine na Okay, so, you will have this uh, displacements, na? na ginatawag okay, na kay displacement na na so you have this uh, story here so na po kay displacement na na okay, displacement 1 and displacement 2 no? so dependent siya sa ina na guys so, sa deformation sa imuhang frame okay so method B is also referred to as the uh, Riley uh, method okay so in in addition to the UBC 97 method of determining the period so, any other substantiated uh, analysis method can be used. So, if a dynamic analysis is performed, so the first model period should be used for T. But, uh, uh, method B, guys, is also dependent with uh, method A. Now, since uh, if method B is used to find the period T, the UBC 97 requires that the value of T cannot, okay? So, cannot be uh, more than. 30% greater the value determined from the empirical method uh, given by equation in A. Okay, in seismic zone 4, okay, so 30%, no, 30% for seismic zone 4, then uh, 40% in, uh, in seismic zones 1, 2, and 3. So, ang pasabot na guys, ang, ang TB, ang TB guys, or ang ang um, period period na nakuha ni mo sa method B should be uh, less than or equal 1.3 1.3 of the A okay so pag once pag once mula pa siya guys no mula pa siya sa kanina value then uh, this will be the prevailing uh, T okay so kana siya okay so that is based on this condition guys ha kana cannot be more uh, cannot be more than 30% greater the value of t from method a so kana siya okay so we have this simple uh, example lang guys no on how to solve a uh, building period so in designing a 21.95 meter steel frame structure with a cast in place concrete shear wall so the Natural period is calculated to be 0 0.8 seconds using UBC 97's rational analysis. Or that is method B. No, maulo ni nakuha sa method B guys, 0 0.8. Utilizing the UBC 97's approximate method, or this is method A, what is the natural period for this building? Okay, so we have this height here guys. No? Atong height or expect this is our... Uh, HN okay so tala to guys TB no from method B then from method A so ito lang siya isolve so for for the value of CT this is 0 0.0488 no or katong sa all other buildings no so since uh, those steel frame siya pero wala siya na ingon na moment resisting frame so basta steel frame lang siya na na siya cast in place uh, concrete shear wall so, pasabot, mabilang siya dito sa all other buildings. Okay, so, that's why muna yung value sa city. Then, atong HN is katong 21.95. So, so 3 fourths. 3 fourths. Over 3 uh, Raised to 3 fourths. Okay, so, this will be our TA. Na. So, muna siya ang para sa uh, method A. Okay? So, what you will do now is, ito kita. So, kung nagamit kag TB, Make sure that your TB is less than or equal to 1.3 of a TA. Then that's the time that you will conclude 
if unsa imong gamiton na uh, t no value for t okay Okay, so uh, those are for the building period. So next is for the earthquake loads. So uh, earthquake loads, which is specifically for horizontal, no horizontal earthquake load H, then for vertical earthquake load. So in designing structures, the load effects of the horizontal and vertical components of the of the earthquake ground motion should be considered. Okay, so mao nang ato ang timan and guys na 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 ang earthquake, dili lang gina siya horizontal, no? Kay, uh, mostly, ang atong ginaisip gina is horizontal ang earthquake. So, dili guys, uh, naapod siya ay uh, vertical uh, components. Actually, uh, naapod tayo kinatawag na orthogonal, no? Orthogonal effect. Okay, so orthogonal direction, orthogonal effect of the earthquake. So, muna siya itong mga directions na example na kay horizontal na kay vertical so orthogonal maybe is ka to mga other directions okay or ana other directions ba so orthogonal effects so kana siya so normally the code allows for the orthogonal effect to be 30% na no? 30% of the considered direction so that will be explained uh, further later okay so the earthquake load is a function of horizontal and vertical seismic induced uh, forces. So this load on an element of the structure is denoted as E and should be determined from this formula, guys. Okay, where in E is equal to uh, uh, rho times EH plus EB. Okay, so that's why be careful, good guys, sa staad ninyo because uh, E. Okay, so this is the kayang staad guys is ang e niya dala is e horizontal okay ang e sa staad e sa staad is e horizontal na siya no as denoted so kung mo na siya ikuan dito uh, mo na ang iyang pagka analyze dito no e, e h so di ba na kay mga load combinations na na e na e involved then simply consider this okay kana siya si rho eh plus eb na storya na to na kinsa na si eh si eb o kani si rho okay so eh represents the forces associated with the horizontal component of the uh, load horizontal earthquake forces are due to the base shear na because base shear is basically horizontal na horizontal in character okay ang b okay ang b share nata so mo na siya mag denote for uh, eh eb represents loads resulting from the vertical component of the uh, earthquake ground motion okay so vertical earthquakes effect may be con may not be considered or eb0 if uh, if you are using a asd or allowable stress design method for proportioning your structural elements. Okay, so ito mga naka-RC, no, ito mga humanag RC guys, so I think ma-recall ninyo itong WSD and USD, no, na method. So this is working stress design. This is for ultimate strength design. Ito po naka-steel na guys, no, ito mga naka-steel. Okay, so napod tayo ASD, na doon nakabok, ASD, and we have this uh, LRFD. Okay, so working uh, allowable. This is allowable stress design, and this is uh, uh, kanamurag same na siya, no, for uh, USD guys. Okay, so kana siya. So ang kaning uh, USD and LRFD is uh, mga these are using factored, no, factored loads. So, ang nag-nanay factor load then ang um, WSD is monitor mga service loads no using service loads so kana siya 
So, kung you are utilizing service loads for proportioning your structural element, then then EV can be considered as zero. Because, but normally, guys, ang atong design mga gito is mahulog it sa USD and LRFD. And that's why we need to consider e, uh, EV uh, in that matter. Okay, so for strength design or LRFD, uh, the vertical earthquake effect is equal to the increase of 0.5 CA times I times D. So this over the dead load effect D. Okay, so where in CA, so na discuss na natin guys, si CA. So pasabot na guys, ang EB is equal to kana, 0 0.5 of CA. So na discuss na natin ng CA last time na the seismic response coefficient and we also have this I so ang ato ang problema ka is D kinsa na siya so that is a dead load guys so D or dead load and this will be discussed later okay, together with the redundancy or re reliability factor ro okay so based on the UBC 97 the estimated maximum earthquake force EM can be developed in a structure uh, should be determined using this formula. So, EH, na na na, introduce na ko na kayo na, that is based on sa base shear, guys. Then, na, uh, uh, omega O. Okay, ang omega O is, na na po dito, last time na, sa katong, kauban na itong R, guys, na itong R. So, diba na ito omega O, dari. Then, na po ito HN, diba dari, itong height, so, depende sa kung kung saan na klase na framing sa structure ang imuang gipili. Okay, so, omega O is the seismic force amplification factor, no? That is due, that is to require to account the structural overstrength. So, ito na 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 discuss last time. Okay, so, mo na estimated maximum earthquake force formula. Okay, so now let, let us discuss the raw value or reliability or redundancy factor. So redundancy is an important characteristic of a structure providing multiple paths of resistance. So higher redundancy in a structure implies uh, better reliability. So pasabot, uh, I think familiar mo in a word, no? redundancy or redundant. So that is from your uh, structure, structural analysis or theory 1 or theory 2 ninyo guys, diba? So, I think familiar mo na. So, mura, uh, redundancy dito na itong pagkabalo is murag support, diba? So, diba habang nagadagan ang redundancy, pasabot, mas indeterminate ang ang structure, no? Diba? Indeterminate structure siya. Then, mas daghan o daghan support, pasabot, daghan o reaction, daghan mo resist. Okay, so daghan mo resist sa ato mga loading. So that's why kung taas ang resistance or taas ang kuan, kung taas ang redundancy, no? Higher the redundancy, so the better reliability sa structure. So mas gusto na to na no, mas daghang support, mas maayo pero uh, dapat strategic pod, no? Strategic. Not all the time na makakuan, makagara-gara og kuan uh, padagan sa redundant. Okay? So the reliability or redundancy factor is applied as an increase in horizontal uh, seismic forces associated with the base shear. So, nakita mo ito na ito kanina sa formula, di ba? E is equal to rho, uh, EH. Oh, so, muna. So, increase na na niya. No, depende na sa value later, guys. So, increase na niya ng EH or base shear dara sa imuhang earthquake load. So, the the factor effectively reduce the response uh, modification factor. So, makita na ito na later guys sa formula sa base shear. Kung tinood ba niyang gingon na ang, ang rho will uh, reduce, no? Will reduce the value of R. Okay. So, in addition to the number and distribution of vertical elements of the lateral for the existing system, the size of the ground floor area of the structure determines the value of uh, rho. Okay. Um, ang iya, gikuan niya dali guys. Gi, 
Okay, ba size niya ng vertical elements or usually, di ba, for structures, columns man na, no? Columns ang murag yahang ginamin. Okay. The reliability or redundancy factor ro values varies from 1 and 1.5. So, dira lang ang range, guys. 1 and 1.5. Okay, so, uh, to inform you, no, normally, guys, uh, ang uban, no, pa, to make it easy no ang um, the most the most conserve, conservative value for redundancy factor is 1 okay 1.0 okay pwede ka mag-assume na 1.0 if your structure is regular okay so regular structure so i think na discuss na to na eh, no? sa katong second part kung saan yung pagkabalo if you have a regular structure okay yung regular structure. Ako na. Regular in, sa ito, regular in plan, no? sama ito sa plano, no? Regular in plan, you have vertical regularity. Okay, ito sa second part, di ba? So, na-discuss na ito na about sa regular structure. So, di ba, distinguish na ito dito kung unsa'y kalayaan sa regular and regular structure. And, I think kung Kung nabilong ang imuhang soil type sa D. Okay, kung na soil type D ka, or ang gingon po dito guys is kung stable, no? Kung stable ang yuta, then you have the right to assume that your redundancy factor is 1. Okay, so sa inyuhang plate, no? So since akong gingon sa inyuhang, make it regular. So isa po nila sa factor guys, nga nung regular structure lang yun ako to. No, simple lang na structure because we wanted that your row is 1. No, because if you do not assume that your row is 1, then you will be using this formula here. So, ba? Okay, this is for US customary and this is for SI. So, the formula sa row, natin makita na shear ratio na siya guys. Then, we have this AB. Ito na ilailahan na rin sa next slide. So, the UBC 97 uh, defines the element story shear ratio. So, mga pang tawag din guys. Element story shear ratio. As the ratio of the design story shear in the most heavily loaded single element divided by the total design story shear. Okay, so the value of uh, of tau, no? Mga tau man siguro nyo, di ba? So, depends on the structural system and can be taken as 1. So, yahay to mga naasa seismic zone 0, 1, and 2. But, again, we are in seismic zone 4. So, umurag din na to. Pwede na ikuha na 1. Okay? Ang, ang tau value or ang shear ratio. So, tau max is the maximum element story shear ratio in a given direction of the loading that occurs in any of the story levels at or below two-thirds of the structure site. AB is the ground floor area of the structure determined in uh, feet per second or meter uh, square meter. Okay. Pero for, kung gusto niyo isolve, guys, kung gusto niyo isolve ng row, then maybe, uh, for simple na pod, for simple uh, analysis or application, uh, pwede rin ko na siya mag-1 lang sa na. Okay. But if you wanted to get really the max, then you have to follow this uh, uh, statement here na yung gingan ka na. Okay. So for you to solve the shear ratio max. Okay. So that is for the reliability factor. Then next is a total uh seismic uh, dead load. So, as again, na depit guys. So, dito na maka to sa 1. Uh, isa po na yung maka to dito sa katong sa EV. Tama, no? Kaya naman to yung D dito, di ba? Then, also, kanin W po guys, magamit po na unya dito sa base shear. No? Because we will be having this uh, formula later that base shear, the basic formula for base shear is CS times W. Okay? Because, uh, basically, guys, wala. Uh, ang earthquake, 
will be dependent upon your seismic weight no specifically sa dead load specifically sa dead load so kung wala yung weight wala po yung, wala po yung mga shaking na may tabo no sa structure so that is dependent upon your uh, seismic dead load so the, the weight w used to calculate base shears and building periods is normally the total seismic dead load of the structure okay so specifically dead load yun na yung gikuan guys di emphasize din no? seismic dead load so as part of normal practice all of the foundation weight and half of the story uh, wall weight are commonly omitted in the analysis of seismic uh, diaphragm loading so pasabot ana guys is tatadari ng Okay, so say you have this frame. So ang analysis mo gud ana guys is dire ka mag weight sa tunga na no? tunga sa mga or mga mid height na ginatawag okay, sa kana. So kung kaon nimo ang weight dire guys say uh, this is uh, W1 kung kaon nimo nang weight dire sa baba. So say that's W1 so kanila lang imo consider no. Kanila lang imo consider na 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 height Okay, so mauna na yung consider na height. So, this say this is H, no? H1, no? Say that is H1. So, kana. So, pasabot, guys. Uh, pasabot, kaning na dali sa baba, kaning half dali sa ground floor, kaning uh, is obli obliterated or omitted, no? So, nawala ni siya, guys. So, wala na ilabot. Okay, kaning dali sa baba. And katong sa foundation pod, kung nanay siya foundation sa baba, wala ilabot. No, wala ilabot. So, kala, tanan na nada rin, half. Say, this is half, no? Now, say, that is why. So, wala ilapil na. Okay? So, nana ang pag-solve. So, kung isolve na po ni muna dali, W2, or weight 2, so, nana ka sa mid-height, then, mid-height na pod. Then, say, you have this H2 here. No, H2. O, oh, kanal na po. O, oh, kanal na. Yung consider na height. 2 compute 4. Na din load. Okay? So, kato. Now, this includes the weight of the ceiling. No? It's weight of the ceiling. Partitions. Mga walls. Mga glass. Ana. Then, pipes. And ductings. Pipes. Ikan sa plumbing. No? Ikan sa plumbing. Mga mechanical ducts. No? Mga kani mechanical ducts. Ikan na mechanical ducts. Then aside sa pipes. Napuna sa electrical. Diba? Napuna sa electrical. So appeal na sila guys. No? Mga accessories na ginatawag. Mga ceiling. Then all uh, equipment that are normally attached. No? Normally attached sa uh, sa floor, no? Kanan siya. So, W does not include full design roof and live loads. Okay, so, uh, dili necessary na naay live load, guys. Okay, kay uh, ang i-detect man yung maayo good sa earthquake is a dead load. But, we will have this exemption later, no? Kani? Pero again, full, no? Ang ang gingon man is full. So, dili good, no? Dili good na makonsider ba full so there there will be certain percentages lang no for you to consider uh, live load and na po yung mga considerations later so the objective in summing up seismic weight w is to include all contributions to mass likely to be present at the time of an earthquake so mo to atong gusto guys na makuha gid ang tibuok seismic weight no kay kanina seismic weight um maybe later no maningil ni sa inyuhan no maningil na sa imuha pag naanay earthquake pag dili nimo ma consider tong uban then uh, ang gina predict nimo na behavior sa structure may not be achieved no kay kulang man nimo mga seismic weight na gipang consider okay so however uh, applicable portions of other load should be included as follows so mga guys okay here uh, there's a minimum of 25% of floor live load 
o pwede, no? Mag pwede ka mag-consider 25% of the floor live load. So, labi na kung na yung mga sa imuhang, kung ang purpose sa building is storage. Then, uh, pag na mga warehouse, di ba? Naman ay mga storages, no? Mga mga bugas, mga goods, sa mga inana. Ay, mga storage. So, pwede magdungag ka 25% sa floor live load. Okay? So, no less than 10 pound force per feet squared or 0.48 kilonewton per square meter must be added when partition loads are used in the design of floor. Okay, so I think guys, kung ako ani, uh, I think idea na ako ani sa 0 0.48 is sa plastering na siya. Uh, ako ala idea. Because plastering, no, plastering based on sa NACP is 0 0.24 for one side only. But if you will uh, consider plastering for both sides, so 0 0.48. Okay. Partition loads. Specifically for concrete uh, hollow block. So design snow loads uh, exceeding uh, 30 uh, pound force per square foot or 1.44 kN per square meter must be included but may be reduced by up to 75% if approved by the local building official. So I think there is a concern ani, since we, we do not consider snow loads here. The total weight of permanent equipment must be included. Okay, so mga, mga permanent at uh, permanently attached uh, na mga butang no sa imuang structure. So you have to consider that. Okay, so that is all for the seismic dead load. Then now let us proceed to the seismic base shear coefficient na. Okay, so after na kita guys, so coefficients na ta. So para at least makita na to later before tamo ambak yun dito sa formula git sa base shear ito sa ilailaho ng coefficient niya ang ginaingon okay para to ma-explain so the formula so this is the basic formula so i think na tagal na tamo gin kagayin na so this is the basic formula for base shear or general formula no so cs times w so this is found in 1997 uh, nehrp so this is one of the uh, katong institution or code na sa UBC 97 in determining the seismic base shear. So, so CS is the seismic base shear coefficient uh, is a function of uh, natural period uh, of structure T and the soil profile types. So, not, sa CS daw guys, makuha, later sa formula, makita na to na 90 Nabot ito mga soil profile types. Then, uh, then makita na ito C A and C V later. Okay, so, mga purpose guys, nga nag-discuss, gina ito mga parameters, no? For you to understand this uh, wholly. No? So, the UBC 97 design base shear. So, the corresponding uh, expression for CS may be obtained. So, this will be our first formula pa lang na guys, no? For our CS or this is the basic no basic formula for cs now because later we will encounter formulas which includes maximum and minimum formulas okay for uh base shear coefficient okay so cs equal to cv okay so i think kabalo na tani cv no naka table na siya then i think kabalo na ta ng i importance factor then over uh, r i think kabalo na ta na no based on what kind of structure uh, we, will be, we will be using then also the building period okay so ang gamiton lang guys uh, to get the natural period of the structure is uh, maybe we will be using method A no, for, for simple uh, analysis so this equation can be used for structures having a longer uh, period no, or velocity Response. We will uh, uh, will be seeing a graph later, no, for us to explain this uh, scenario here. Kung saan ang ginaingon na velocity respond or longer period, then apo tay acceleration respond later. Base shear values will be greater 
four structures having natural periods of less than TS, no? TS is equal to C, CB over 2.5 of CA. Okay? So, pag, pag less than, no? Pag less than, ano yung value? If your T, if your T na makuha, specifically for method A, is less than TS, no? If less than TS, then you will have a greater value for base shear. Okay? So, inanaya pa sa so, whereas, if your TA is greater than a TS, then you will have a lower value for uh, for V, no? Or base shear. Okay, so now, so if this is for a uh, longer period or velocity span, so we also have those for a uh, shorter period or acc acceleration response uh, structures. So, the base seismic base shear coefficient is given by this formula so this will be our second formula no for cs so 2.5 ca times i over r so i think kabalo na punta na ca i and r okay so makuha natin siya anytime in addition to the natural period of the structure of t so the importance factor i in the response uh, modification factor R influence the value of seismic base shear coefficient. So, an increase in I increases the seismic base shear coefficient, whereas increase in the value of R decreases it. Uh, pasabot, kay ang CS, guys, is your CS is directly proportional to I. <coughs> Nagpasabot, guys, kung mo increase ang I, so normally mag increase gina siya because they are directly proportional to each other. So pasab kani, ang R is inversely proportional to uh, CS. So this only means na kung masakang R, no kung masakang R, uh, mababa ng CS. No? Kay inverse man, no? In inverse na effect. So mga nang pasabot na rin ng statement. Okay, so money guys, the minimum design base shear coefficient or this is also called as the response spectrum. Okay, so mga po nang ginakuhan sa umban. Hindi natawagan eh, response spectrum. Okay, so minimum minimum design base shear. So, uh, money nang ginagawin ka ganyan na guys. So money na formula tong base shear coefficient formula sa CS if velocity controlled uh, seismic or katong long period seismic. So, dara na siya. Long period seismic. So, ang ang base shear coefficient CS is 2.5 CAI over R if it is an acceleration controlled uh, seismic or the short period uh, structures. So, makita na ito dali guys na uh, kanina CS dali kanina siya na CS maon itong uh, I think the basic nata. ah, dali pa Okay, so this will be the value of CS if time is 0 no? okay. uh, or ang period no seismic period ang horizontal mga guys is seismic period then kanina dali is the seismic base shear coefficient. So, monitor ang TS, guys. So, diba ang TS ganyan na is naingon to ganyan na tali. So, TS is CB over 2.5 of CA. Okay, so CB over 2.5 of CA. Okay. So, we have this TO, gaban guys. So, I think TO is 20% of TS or 0 0.2 of TS. So, from 0, then you have this value here sa CS. Then, kanayin yung makita dali na horizontal line, guys. So, kanayin yung horizontal line na makita. So, this is the the value of CS here is given by this formula. Nung kana siya. Or katong sa acceleration control. Or katong sa short period structures. Okay? So, ba ang gingan ka ganyan na tanan value sa T TA the value sa T, TA, which is less than 
or equal to TS, di ba? Ang ganyan-ganyan na is taas ang base shield. Di ba? So, pasabot guys, dali sa short period structures, so taas ang base shield dali. Okay, so taas ang base shield dali. Okay, so kana taas ang base shield. Then, dapat to ganyan, ganyan na that if your T or period is greater than uh, TS, then the value of base shear is uh, lesser, no? Or kanina rin sa long period structure. Okay? So, ang kanina mga CS dali guys, CS sa uh, kanina structure ay eh, dali, sa long period structure is given by this formula. Or katong sa velocity control seismic. Okay? So, kanina siya. So, pasabot, kanina area dali, so, dili kay taas ang base shear dali. No? Kaya nagababa man yung mga CS. Okay. So, seismic uh, base shear coefficient na gaman guys. So, for from UBC 97, the maximum value of the seismic base shear coefficient is given by this. O, okay, mauna nitong ganagana guys. Kanida rin. Okay. So, kana Maximum. Okay, sa maximum, kaya nasa dali sa pinaka-peak, no? pinaka-peak sa imuhang response spectrum. Okay, so, auto, consider siya as max. Okay, maximum. O, kana, CS max. Okay? So, in all seismic zones for short uh, period structures, CA represents the effective peak acceleration at grade with a maximum natural uh, period of uh, one second. Okay, so if we if we have this uh, maximum CS, then we also have this um, minimum. So for long period structures based on the design base shear requirement of UBC 97, the minimum base shear coefficient in all seismic zones is uh, specified by this formula. So 0.11 CA times I lang guys. Okay, so that is the minimum. Or this will be our third formula. Okay, so nagamitan. Okay? So kana siya. Then, uh, in addition for seismic zone 4, so applicable ni sa to ano kay seismic zone 4 man uh, usually na belong gila to structure. So applicable ni siya. So the UBC 97 requires that the minimum seismic base shear coefficient be further limited to account for near source effects. So, pasabot. Kato na mga NA or NV. Na? So, based on 97, UBC 97, the minimum seismic base shear coefficient in seismic zone 4 is given by this formula. So, duha na yung basihan, no? So, for minimum. So, either ka na or kani. Okay. So, this will be our fourth formula. So, we will be following four formulas, guys, no? So, since kay seismic zone 4 man ta. So, pag-compute pag na to sa kuan, sa, pag -ani? sa CS, so we have four, four, four formulas, so mas klaro na eh, no? So, th this is the minimum design base shear coefficient for seismic zone 4 only. So, money applicable ni sa to, guys. So, we have this here. No? So, kani Kung muna ito ang uh, structure period. So, ang sa ito dali guys. Kana siya na time. So, that is TO. No? 20% of TS. So, kana siya. Nako kay TS nila. So, this is the maximum. No? Maximum CS. Kana. So, this is the max. So, kani. So, second formula. So, kana siya. So, that is the... Uh, Kumbaga mura basic no basic formula no for CS no within this range for the long period structures then this formula Okay so this formula here CS no this is for katong sa seismic zone 4 guys na minimum so this will be our third formula so kana dili guys sa 0.8 Z kana 0.4 dala katong na sa Z no seismic zone 4 so NAI over R then, do not forget the C CS minimum, katong 0.11. 0.11, no? 
0.11 uh, CA I. Okay. So, as our fourth formula. Okay. So, asa ka mag-start og CS, no? Kung asa ka mag-start og CS, guys, magamit ni na CS for seismic zone 4. If your time is within this range, na, kana na. Kana na time, dari. Kana dari sa graph. Okay. So, kana na tidara is given by this formula. Okay. So, that will be our uh, response spectrum for seismic zone 4. Okay, so for in order for us to apply all those formulas, so let us uh, have our example. So in designing a 10-story steel uh, special concentrically uh, braced frame for a shelter in an emergency preparedness center in seismic zone 4. So location about 3.1 mile or 5 kilometers from an active seismic source with an undetermined soil profile. Uh, we are tasked to determine the seismic base shear coefficient. So, pasabot na na is katong basic formula, guys. Pamayungon siya, seismic base shear coefficient lang. So, kani. Kana. Okay. So, if, if the question is specific with regards to minimum, okay, minimum seismic base shear. So, either of these two formulas here, no? Kay seismic zone four man eh. No, nabilang. Okay. So, try to solve these two minimum values. Then we have also this maximum seismic uh, base shear coefficient, which is this value 2.5. Okay. So, solution first to determine the seismic base shear coefficient. So, CS, so we'll be using this formula here. Okay. So, mga gini uh, usual lang gina una og solve guys na, na CS. Okay. So, so, so ang giunan niya guys is uh, to solve T no? using method A so CT so this is a steel special concentric brace frame so wala gapon dili gapon siya moment resisting frame dili siya eccentrically frame so nahulog siya dito sa all other buildings so that's why CT is 0 0.0488 then HN 36.58 so given no given height no hn so therefore we could get that t is equal to 0. Point, kana, 0.0488 times 36.58 raised to 3 fourths so our time t is 0. 0.725 and then uh so na t guys so no equal there is ang r so, based on the table, guys, katong sa NCP, or I think ang yang gamit dali sa UBC. No, UBC table na yang gamit dali, guys. So, ang nakuha niya na R is uh, 6.4. But, in the our case, ha, sa NCP na table lang gamit na. So, 6.4. Then, we have this I, no importance factor, is uh, 1.25. Since this is for shelters in emergency preparedness center. Oh, tara. Emergency Preparedness Center. So, uh, murang nahulog siya dito sa Essential Facility. Uh, 1.25. Then, since the, the the soil profile type is not determined, then it is better to assume that uh, our soil profile type is SD. Okay. So, natay R, natay T, natay I, then for CV. Na? Then, uh, para makuha ng CV, di ba, kailangan taog NV. Na? So, para makuha ng NB, we are uh, also required to have the seismic zone factor Z. Then, kato nang sa table guys, di ba? So, remember last time. So, muna yan nakuha dito guys. So, 0 0.44 NA, then 0 0.64 NB. Uh, one of the basis of this is, kato pong, yatag niya na location sa active seismic source, which is the 5 kilometer seismic source. So, just look at the table, no? Last time na akong ipanghatag. That is the value for CV. So, you compute niya, guys. Ito na. na. From the table, 5 kilometers side. Nakuha niya NA and NB, 1.2 and 1.6 respectively. Then, uh, money niya nakuha na CA and CV. So, now, we, are, we will try to substitute all the values we have uh, 
you have got no you have gotten sa kato mga tables and solutions so cb 1.02 i 1.25 r 6.4 then t is 0 0.725 so we have this value for cs so seismic uh, base shear coefficient okay so mo na tong answer for letter a Okay, so next for letter B, so based on UBC 97, so the minimum base shear coefficient is katong unahon naman tong 0.11 uh, CA times I. So we have this CA already, no, nasolve na ito na ganina dito, 0.53, then I na 1.25. So we have this CS minimum. Then since we are located in seismic zone 4, then uh, we still have to compute this. CS minimum. So again, uh, sa t-shirt lang itong mga values na ito nakuha, no? ito sa mga parameters guys. So, ang nakuha na ito is 0 0.1 uh, na CS minimum. So, we have here CS minimum for seismic zone for 0 0.10 which is greater than obviously sa Z CS minimum na 0 0.073 hence the seismic base shear coefficient CS cannot be less than uh, 0 0.10 Okay, so Money at ang answer guys is can CS minimum Money at ang CS minimum So 0 0.10 Okay, so dili pa sabot na minimum guys Dili pa sabot na minimum Katong pinakagamay da yun So dili, inana ang pasabot da ha Kaya ang, ang, ang basihan mag sa minimum data is katong sa uh, kaya ito mo na i-compare compare ga ang mga values for CS okay so ang kwao na CS minimum is katong 0 0.10 okay kay okay, pag once kani mo i-consider guys kani mo i-consider as CS minimum then uh, mag-contradict sya dali no? mag-contradict sya dali guys sa kuan mag-contradict siya dali sa CS minimum sa seismic zone 4. So, na na. Oh, that is for B. For C, based on UBC 97, so the maximum seismic base shear coefficient is given by this formula. Substitute again the values of CA, then I and R, then CS max is 0. Uh, CS max is 0 0.2588 Okay, so Walang maximum So, ang pinakalas good guys is You will conclude uh, what CS Ang imong gamitin, no? Para sa imong base shear later Okay, so uh, Imo atong ikuan I Tawagan, ikuan imo itong mga Upat ka CS na nan Then you have to compare all the values so, muna itong CS, 0 0.2748. So, muna itong uh, seismic base shear coefficient. So, in here, we have this conclusion. So, CS is 0 0.2748. So, muna itong murag basic, no? Murag normal na CS, guys. So, kato normal na CS, yung taas siya sa imuha maximum. So, muna muna yung allowable, allowable uh, maximum CS. So, Consequently, CS is 0 0.2588 is the governing seismic base shear coefficient for this structure. So, ang basihan ni mo is katong CS max. Okay, so, mawag dyan kung, kung pangutanan ka guys kung sagi na CS ang gamitin. So, mawag niya answer. So, 0 0.2588. Okay. So, kailangan mong good guys ang CS ni mo. Ang CS or kanin? Kanin basic na CS dapat ah uh, siya less than or equal siya sa CS max but uh, greater than or equal to ang uh, CS minimum so mga inana nga to ang may mo na condition okay so sa to example ang CS ning ning kon man sa ning laho siya no or na greater than siya sa CS max so dili pwede no so dili ni siya pwede na CS. So, therefore, ang ato ang conclusion, ang CS na gamitan is the CS max. Okay?
Okay, so that's that's all for uh, the base shear coefficient. So I think for our next lecture, sa so, kato na jum mag compute ta og uh, base shear.